Some guys take their calls on superphones. Some ladies field their calls on phablets. But it takes some real gall, a real desire to challenge society's conventions to make your phone calls on a tablet, a tablet you hold up to your head. Among other topics, that's what we're talking today on episode 043 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once a week podcast from PocketNow.com where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in the year 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, Editorial Director at Pocket Now, and today I'm joined all the way from Oradia by Managing Editor Anton Di Nodia. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. And we're also joined by Senior Editor and Chief Carolinian Taylor Martin. Hello to you. Howdy. <laughs> Welcome aboard, gents. Uh, we have a lot to uh, discuss in terms of weird off-the-wall stuff and not a lot of headline news, which is kind of an interesting re- inversion from uh, the past few weeks, wouldn't you say? I'm, personally, I'm looking forward yes. to a yeah. I'm looking forward to a podcast that is only maybe ten percent or less dedicated to talking about the Galaxy S4. Uh, it, it, we want to kick it off with a thought thread, courtesy of, of managing editor Anton, and that is relating to the, the teaser that I postulated a second ago: talking on a tablet. Tony, your phone pad review is up, and we all want to hear your thoughts. Well, it's been an interesting uh, experience. I can tell you that much. I've been I've been using it as my daily driver from uh, I think it was two Fridays back up until the moment I uh, published my review. And since I've been using it since Friday, I've used it also as my daily driver for clubbing activities, for for hiking activities, and for everything else. So while everybody was uh, pulling out their iPhones and their <laughs> HTCs and Samsungs, I just slapped the slab on the on, on the table. I almost bumped over a bottle of... Uh, I'm not going to make any announcements of what it was. So <laughs> thing is, thing is, I would still be using the Asus PhonePad as a daily driver if my particular unit had a back-facing camera. And and this is a small rant of mine. The entire point behind the Asus PhonePad is that you leave your phone at home so that you can take your phone calls on a device which is both a tablet and a phone. I can agree to that. But now, since you don't have a back camera, you leave your phone at home, you take the PhonePad, but you still have to bring your phone or a camera with you because you you cannot take any pictures so that's just kind of dumb from 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 asus yeah i, I agree i mean if it's if yeah. it's positioning itself to be a fo- smartphone replacement it should definitely have a primary camera built in and i have thought of this um people not only laugh at you they uh, the, the laughter goes away after your first phone call people <laughs> people heavily frown upon the phone pad and not necessarily the phone pad as the asus product uh, the entire concept of talking on something so outrageous that they don't know what it is so i think that the problem with the phone pad is and the, and the products alike, is society itself. And I want to ask you this, guys. We know that there is no limitation to including phone and earpiece functionality on a tablet. Still, only a couple of OEMs do it. Do you think it's, it's the social factor? Uh, um, Taylor, I'm going to let you go, yeah. Sort of, but it's also kind of a, an efficiency thing. Um, sure, if you can carry an, a 7-inch or 8-inch tablet... And feel comfortable with that, by all means, I think it's a valid option. But it still it looks strange, and that's the whole social part, that that we're trained to think that holding any other device up to our head it looks normal. But if you stand back and think about it, if someone from 50 years ago, 60 years ago, saw us and holding something up to their head all the time like this or, or staring at something that we carry in our pockets. and, and Taylor, how the will with. people look at me when I will hold up not my tablet to my ear, but my brand new Galaxy S4 Zoom camera to my ear? I mean, come <laughs> on. Oh, he, yeah. Last year he was talking on his tablet. Now he's talking on his camera. What the hell is wrong with him? I felt ridiculous yeah. enough just for the 10 seconds it took to take that picture with the Galaxy camera up against my head <laughs> for the Galaxy camera as a, yeah. as a daily yeah. driver piece. I can imagine doing that on a consistent basis. Go ahead, Taylor. Sorry, you're not done. But, but no, I mean, if if someone from 30, 40, 50, 60, it doesn't matter. Any, anybody from the past beyond the, the birth of the, the cell phone, 
um, that I'm sure they said the same things when um, the first cell phone came about, you know, uh, the bag phone. Why would someone carry a bag and hold this thing up to their ear to talk to someone? I've got a phone at home. You know, so I don't know. Maybe it's a little different, but I personally would never carry a tablet as a smartphone replacement to hold up to my head to answer calls. I wrote an editorial about it, and I'm fine. I take calls on my iPad all the time. I'm okay with, with plugging in a headset or a Bluetooth headset or something that doesn't have me holding a huge device up to my face. So, yeah, but that, that's an option. I mean, the HTC One and the S4 have an infrared blaster. You don't have to use it. Just slap an earpiece there. Don't You don't have to use it. But those three people, me, the biggest fan, probably the Asus guy who was, came up with the idea of the phone pad, and that one single guy from Samsung who, against all naysayers, slapped an earpiece on the Note 8.0, us three can enjoy it. <laughs> well, it's a good point. I think though that like you have to factor in cost cutting, like for for different models. Like I don't think the Nexus Seven would have been as cheap as it is if they had built in some of these extras that some people wanted, like a primary camera or like an earpiece. You know, I mean, I, th- I feel like at some point you have to say, well, are we making a complete product or are we making a product that's going to sell for much less money, and that's going to be its differentiating factor. You know, and I, but I, I think they've managed to keep the price cost, excuse me, the cost down on the phone pad, right? That's pretty absolutely. Cheap, cheap yeah, tablet. I paid for it three thirty three dollars, but the, it's an expensive country, so you might be able to get it for two forty nine. I wonder what it would be without the earpiece. You think it would be like two two thirty nine, two twenty without the earpiece, but maybe with a stronger, faster processor. Right. Oh, right, right. And there's a lag thing. Well, see, here's the thing. With here's the thing, I, I, I get. I get Tony why you why you would want to do that. I think it's uh, like a simplification factor. It's like okay, I'm going to carry this one device. I've got my Nexus Seven actually right here on the table, so I can uh, so I can sort of get a feel for for what you're talking about. They're twins. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And and by the way, Asus is not an idiot. Uh, so I, I I want to make clear that you know they may not be positioning the phone pad as a total replacement if they haven't built in a primary camera. But if you're going to use it that way, like my problem would be primarily in pocketability. But that social factor would definitely creep in. And to answer your question, Tony, yeah, I think, I think it's definitely a, a side effect of the way we are we are conditioned to think of what is normal, as Taylor was saying. But also, as a result of that, I think we've all been we've all grown used to people trying to make a splash, yeah. people trying to showboat, and and any time back in the day when people would have their super clear cases on their phones with the flashing LEDs. Or some kind of really ostentatious, like bejeweled <laughs> casing. And they'd roll up and I'd be like, "Oh, you are trying to impress me." Okay, I feel like I would feel the same way about someone who rolled up to like my my dinner table at uh, at, at the club or something <laughs> like that when talking on a on a phone bed. And, and you like, were in you this doing? situation. Yeah. You, you were telling us about people calling you out on the streets when uh, when you used the Note Two for the first time. Mm-hmm. Oh, all the time. And actually, that still happens consistently with the Note Two. Whenever I take it out, people are like, "What is that, man?" Yeah. I had someone ask me if my Note 2 was an iPhone. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just I reached over the, the table and smacked them. <laughs> with 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 your Samsung iPhone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so No, uh what well, right. No, go ahead. Uh, oh. Oh. Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We agree. No. <laughs> um no, I, I totally agree with Michael. Um but I'm not against using, like I said, I'm not against it. I just, uh, the, the whole holding it up to my head thing, I just, yeah, and it's just, I don't know. It doesn't seem efficient for taking calls. I mean, would you do the same thing with a 10-inch tablet? No, you cannot yeah. hold that. I mean, I could hold that with one hand, but but you cannot. Yeah, 99% well, of the people cannot. Tony, what's the story on like hand fatigue when you're doing that? Like you're holding the thing up to your head and, I mean, sure, for two minutes is fine. But what if you're having like a 45-minute phone call? No, if if I extend my palm completely and I lay the phone pad uh, vertically, I'm having like uh, more than one inch on the left and more than one inch on the right, so I can easily grasp it without any problems. But then again, I have big hands. Yeah. And it's not a heavy device, n- not at all. Right. I've forgotten. Is it lighter than the Nexus 7 or...? Uh, I, from the top of my head, I cannot tell you. But it's let's say it's it's about that weight. Okay. Well... <sighs> Yeah, it's it's an interesting experiment. It's definitely it, it, I think it's instructive in that it's showing us the threshold of it, or the boundaries of kind of what we will tolerate both as as users and as society in general. Like I don't see yeah. the 7-inch uh, phone catching on, but it, it that 
gives us an, an interesting delineation point where it's like, okay, so eventually these phablet makers will reach this, this, this cutoff point. And how big can screens really get is, I think, a question that's been asked for, for over a year now in, in, the, uh, in the landscape. And it's like, well, I don't know. You can, you can make bezels slimmer. You can, get, you can get the device to almost an all-screen you know, configuration with fancy software tricks to prevent false touches from grabbing the unit and stuff. But, like, how big can it actually get? I don't think it can get as big as 7 inches. I think the cutoff is somewhere south of 6 inches myself. But. Yeah, well, the Galaxy Mega. Ugh. <laughs> well, we also said the same thing about the the original Galaxy Note. Everybody said, why would anybody ever want a 5.3-inch phone? Why? Nobody's ever going to want to use that. It's way too big. Nobody's going to want it. And look at it. And look at the Galaxy Note 2. Right. The, the yeah, truth I mean, is – I'm sorry. Go on. Go on. No, I was done. Uh, the truth is that, that the Note 2, while being an excellent product, is is not tablet enough. It is still a big phone. And what makes it so popular, I think, it's not its actual physical size, but the S Pen functionality. So even though we are going beyond five inches, it is not tablet enough. I don't know. I, 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 think, that it's, I think that it's size more than the S Pen, at least here like in America. I was sitting next to a guy at a, uh, at a theater function recently who's an acquaintance of mine, and he pulled out his note too. I'm like, oh, you just got that, didn't you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, so I just kind of interview him for a little bit. I'm like, so what, what was the driving force there? You know? And he's like, well, you know, it's, it's so big. And then I, I told him, I was like, I wrote a piece once called, uh, what was it called? Jumbo uh, phones? No. Well, yeah, I've written about 40 pieces with that word in the title. No, it was like, oh, yeah, with phones this big, who needs a tablet? is what it was. And, you know, he was like, that's exactly right, because I was thinking about buying a tablet, but then I figured, you know, why why invest in a tablet and a smartphone? I'll just get this, and this will serve both those needs. And I, I get that, man. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the Note 2 right now as well, and, and definitely, if I, if I was on a real budget, but I still wanted a smartphone and a tablet, I would consider the Galaxy Note 2 to serve both those needs, because it's, it's, it's almost the best of both. So I, I know it's not why my not the job. Why not Michael... What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, I know it's not my job to wrap the topic up, but I'd like to wrap it up with a question to you guys. It is What's... your job to wrap it. It's your topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the biggest size device you will put up to your ears? In screen size or in... In screen size. If they were to get the bezel down, I would still put up a... Uh, I would go as high as six inches if it had an almost invisible bezel. So the Mega 5.8, yes. The Mega 6.3, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 around there. You're right. Yeah, that, that's that's where I'll sit right now. Yeah, I, I'll I'll try anything. Um, I, I would try taking a call with a tablet, a eight inch tablet, up to my head. But uh, chances are, I'm probably not going to like anything much larger than the Note Two, um, <laughs> just for reasons of carrying it. So, right. I don't have a a belt clip or anything that's going to hold a tablet, and I don't carry a bag everywhere. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, no, Tony. Thank you for your phone pad thoughts. I, I think your review came out on a show where you were not on the air, and I was like, ah, oh, I want to hear more of your thoughts, and then I didn't. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I kept interrupting you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, interrupting Taylor. That should be a joke series, shouldn't it? Interrupting Taylor Martin. Man, you have no idea. There was a long, like, ongoing joke with all my friends. <laughs> all through high school, my family, everything. Every time I open my mouth, it just so happened. And this still goes on today. Every time I open my mouth, something would just happen. Somebody would cut me off or some loud car or truck would drive by as soon as I'm talking. And when I'm done, the noise is gone. Are you serious? And it, it happens perfectly every time. I was sitting at the coffee shop yesterday talking to a friend and I was like, hey, man, you know what? And he's like, what? And I go to talk, and the coffee grinder goes off and for like two and a half minutes. I'm like, how in the world? So if we made a show or a joke like that, it's not my first time. Yeah, you should capitalize on that. Yeah, I was going to say, Taylor, you could probably have your own like you know reality show. Probably yeah. could. We'll just follow you around with an over over the shoulder cam all day. It's like <laughs> being frustrated with Taylor Martin. Yeah, like I go to talk and just. Yeah. Whatever. Just I'm done. Effects come I out. Give up. Yeah. So I, I take that out on the podcast and just cut you off. Remind me, next time we, we're on the year review or something like that, I'll just break out the soundboard <laughs> and make sure to just <laughs> overwrite all your stuff. 
I want to change up the rundown a little bit as we cheap, as we jump into the Android section, our first section of the podcast, uh, because we finished up talking about the phone pad and big smartphones and phablets. And so I want to just briefly touch on uh, what Taylor Martin thinks the Galaxy Note 3 needs to be to avoid being a disappointment. And we know what the commenters think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, got, I got ripped another one in the comments. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah. I'm like. I could comment like "Hey guys" in that comment thread, and they'd just be like all thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Screw you, guy. <laughs> that, that, that's the most confusing thing about about our our discuss environment is that like you, somebody will post the most helpful comment ever. I know I've said this before, but like there, it'll be a piece that asks a question. It's like here's this problem that many people have been having with their whatever their Nexus Four, and then somebody who replies with exactly the way to fix it and like a smiley face and also compliments for everyone will get like 18 downvotes. <laughs> meanwhile, like meanwhile, somebody who comes along and says like, "At least it's better than iPhone and yeah. nothing else," we get like twenty six upvotes. It's like, what, what? What? Are people using bots? Is there something I don't understand <laughs> about gaming discuss? I don't know. Whatever. I have no idea. But um, in regards to the question or yes. the editorial, yes. um, out of all the things that I could think of, obviously it needs to be upgraded to twenty thirteen specs. This is the note. Obviously, three. we're talking yeah. the note three. Okay, note three. So it needs to be upgraded to 2013 specs. That's a that's a given because any upgrade is going to be upgraded to new specs. Mm-hmm. But there were rumors saying that Samsung is, quote unquote, worried about their build quality and the materials they use. I don't know how much I agree with that or believe the rumor, but um, that's something that I hope and would wish that Samsung would do is reevaluate the materials they use. And I made it clear in the article that plastic is not bad. There are great plastics out there to use. It's the plastics that Samsung uses and the coating they put on their plastics Especially that make the them coating. feel yeah yeah. I was going to say that make it, them feel so cheap. Most definitely, that hyperglaze is, is to blame for most of it, and not the material itself. Yeah, yeah. And and the comments were, oh my god, who cares about the build quality? Who cares about what it's made of? It's all about the other parts of the phone. Right. Yeah, yeah. M- maybe. No, maybe. No, no. I, I see. And I just replied right before we came on the air. I, I just replied to one of those comments where it's like, no, you guys weren't saying the Galaxy S3 was badly built until the one came along. And I was like, <laughs> uh, actually, no, that's not true. Here's a link the to one, my review where I complained that it feels yeah. cheap in the hand. The uh, one came along before the S3. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and two, no, I hated four. the Galaxy S3. Oh, all the Galaxy. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you said S3. S3. I you did. Well, no, but I meant the three. Yeah. We're, meant- we're, we're now in a confusing spaghetti oh, bird whoa, nest of failure. Not the One X. Whoa, right. not, no, the one not the X. Not the One X. The One X came first. Yes, Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. No, no, um, no, no, I hated the one. No, I hated the build of the Galaxy S3 from day one. Exactly. I touched it and I'm like, ew. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and I, not to no no spoilers and and I promise my my review I've I've done my research my review will, will be will be subjective. This is the review of the AT and T branded Galaxy S4, correct? Yes. Yes. yes it's very subjective. I've, I've taken you know a very um, broader view of the the of the device. Uh, and, ob- objective. What objective? Yeah, subjective? I yeah. don't know. I'm so We're going to do this on every now. show now. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yes, but, objective. Yeah. But I picked up the phone, and I told I think Tony and Michael this. Um, I picked up the phone when it came in on Friday, and I'm like, man, this is literally just like a Galaxy S3, just more square. And put it back in the box. I just dropped it back in the box, finished what I was doing, <laughs> and I'm like, I, I just, ugh, I can't. But you don't get that impression from a phone that's built really well. It's that first impression that that really just kind of seals the deal, at least for me. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, I had a friend who was looking at getting the S4. She's been like, I want the S4. I want the S4. I can't wait. When is it coming out? When is it coming out? Well, I sat down at the coffee shop yesterday. She came in, and I had the S4 and the 1. And I've been telling her, um, you know, there are other phones out there too, but, you know, don't don't make your decision before you even use the phone. Just, you know, wait. Mm -hmm. And I handed the two phones to her, and I said, which one feels more expensive? And she's like, the one. It's like, exactly. Like, the Galaxy S4 is the more expensive device. It's more premium in regards to specifications and its utility and the features. But it feels like a mid-range device. It really does. Uh, Taylor, would you have had the same opinion about the S4 if the S4 would have been the S3? Now, this is a dumb question. Let me rephrase. If, <laughs> uh, did, did you get it? <laughs> no. 
Now, okay, so uh, are you having this impression of the S4 because you know the S3 is the same and you hate the materials on it? So let's say that the S4 is the first Samsung S device to use this coding, this design, this everything. And to um, rephrase it even further, have you had this opinion of the S3 last year? Yes. I said, okay. you could probably look it up on Twitter. I said as soon as it was announced, I said the Galaxy S3 looks like a feature phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it and it kind of does. And the S4 is less so, um, or less looks less like a, a feature phone. But yes, to answer your question, yes. I didn't like the build or, or design of the Galaxy S2 or the original Galaxy S series. I didn't like the S3, and I don't like the S4 as far as build and quality go. Yeah, so we're talking about I, – I was looking up my review of the Galaxy S3 for Sprint last year, and I think, Taylor, you and I are making the same point because what I said last year was here's what we're saying. This isn't a mid-range gingerbread device for high schoolers. This is a $600 flagship class super phone, and in the hand it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. That's a shame. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like getting a sports car and the interior of the sports car not being leather but being like a, a vinyl pleather. Right. And and all the dashboard is just a cheap, like, matte, flimsy plastic. Yeah. The outside and, of the car is, can, like, a cheap plastic. You can not knock on the inside glass. of the door and it's hollow. Like, the thing yeah. feels cheap. Yeah. Uh, About- like, if you pick up the phone, like the S4, and you kind of, like, slap it in your palm, the whole thing just kind of vibrates and you can actually hear it vibrate. Yeah. Well, and and about like... this time, I can imagine at this exact point the comments on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, they're, right. Exactly. They're gonna kill us. And they're also, us. but also, and and y- y- we have to make the point that the Gal- Samsung is not the prime offend is not the single offender here. You can do no. that with the Lumia 920, which feels like a tank, but of course it had that problem with the the battery wasn't taped down well enough or something, so it would <laughs> rattle around. Like other manufacturers do this. But two points: yeah. one, you can't say that aesthetics are not important to a smartphone. Uh, if you want to be, if you're fine. We're all geeks here. That's great. We're all different flavors of geek, and that's cool. But aesthetics are important for something you carry around with you all day for two years, whether it's how it feels in the pocket, how it feels in the hand. Or, yeah, Shoot a lot of people care how it looks. So, you know, eat it. Oh, yeah. uh, second point <laughs> is this. Um, how does it. The, how does this apply to the, to the, to the Note, Note 3, Taylor? Because you, you were making a good a point that you feel like the Note 3 should be the pioneering force that takes Samsung to the next level of, of aesthetic design or hardware design, but you also, I think, don't think that that's likely, right? I don't think it's likely, and I think, actually, the S4 should have been that. Oh, I, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, well, it, it, well, right, and it, 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 see, here's the thing. I, it, it, this, I was having this conversation last night at Bar Trivia with a friend of mine where it's like, we're talking about iPhone versus uh, Galaxy, the Galaxy family, and we're like, yeah, well, this is what Apple and Samsung have fallen into this pattern of doing, right? They do breakthrough one year, I- I- incremental improvement the next year, breakthrough the year after that, and then an iterative upgrade. So, and I understand that, you know, actually, yeah. because of... of- contracts and and the rate at which people normal people buy phones sure but so how does the note 3 fit into that though because what and what has the note been so far note one was just was like oh my god what is this thing and now and then note two was like oh this is way different because guys it, it was slimmer right it was it was easier to hold it was much more smartphone than weird um kind of shot in the dark wide phablet right yeah the uh to, to put it i guess in a better perspective, the original Note was like the iPad Mini. It's really wide, but yeah. um, you know, you go to like the Nexus Seven, and that's that's what the the Note Two feels more like if you compare it with like a tablet, because yeah. it's um, you're not losing a lot of display, but you're you're actually getting more display. But the the actual physical size is bigger. You know what? Um, I, can I can I just get throw this out there real quick? And I'm sorry, I know I asked you a question. Uh, and Tony, you have one too. Uh, Taylor's got one. We all three have u- have used Note Two rather extensively. Do you guys feel like this is going to be the next uh, the next like vaunted super phone that people are already getting nostalgic about losing? Because I feel like there's a huge fanboy class for this phone that is just above and beyond. It, it's almost equal to the fanboy level surrounding the HD Two. Oh yeah, does that make I, sense? I definitely. <clears throat> I definitely. I don't want to like. My friend was asking me the other day. Uh, I, there was a guy posting an HTC One on Craigslist for like. Five hundred dollars, I think, and I, I was like, man, I could just trade my Note Two and some cash for that. And I'm like, dang, I really don't want to get rid of my Note Two. I don't <laughs> use it. I don't use it outside of, of videos. But you um, don't want to get rid of it. I do not want to get rid what of it. What about you, Tony? 
<clears throat> I'm sorry, I was muted and then speaking and then realized I was muted and then I caught. Oh. So there we go. So, uh, I like the Note 2, but I'm not a huge fan of the Note 2. And I believe the Note 2 is not by by far, is not at all more special than the S3. Just like the Note 3, it will not be more special than the S4. About the only thing which ties me to the Note 2 is its exceptional battery life, as you and I, Michael, have experienced in Barcelona, mm -hmm. and as I have recently expanded it to a 6400 milliamp hour battery. That's the only oh reason God. keeping me tied. Yeah, that's the only reason <laughs> keeping me tied to the Note 2 or the Note 3 if it comes out in August slash September, if it will deliver the same battery life I need. I was saying so this. Are you Go ahead. Are you going to upgrade to the uh, the nine thousand milliamp hour battery, Tony? As soon as soon as I get it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think it's a monster. <laughs> I was talking about missing the Note too. I think maybe on last week's weekly or on the U review or or something like that. And I, I still I continue to miss it. And this Note three has me has me excited. I think we're all pretty convinced that we're going to see it in Berlin, right, in August. Is that yeah. that's still yeah. There's been yeah. no indication to the contrary. Um, I also, Taylor, I join you in, in hoping that Samsung strikes out on a different direction. As I've said before, though, I think that the Galaxy S line is where is where the pioneering innovation happens. I don't think it really. I mean, excuse me. In terms of in terms of aesthetic design, in terms of hardware. Yeah, um, uh, but there are so many things that they could do without drastically changing much of anything. Yeah. The Note Two, for instance, feels a lot better in the hand than the S3 or the S4 by a long shot. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and it's the weight. So Samsung focuses so much on, on making their their flagship phone, as you said in your review, extra portable. And by doing that, they made it extremely, extremely lightweight. But 130 grams over something that's 180 grams isn't really that significant. I mean, there's a big difference in that weight. You can feel it when you're holding them. But right. it's not like 180 grams is going to pull your pants down when you put your phone in the pocket. True so um, <laughs> unless you, I'm just unless you're I mean, water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the the worst thing I've had to do with the S4 was take the battery out. Um have have you done that Michael taking what? the battery out battery and just pump? held the phone and oh. the, the phone and the battery door without the battery in it? No, I've, I wouldn't want to do that. No. It, it feels like 90% of the weight is the battery. Like yeah. if you hold the phone itself, it feels like it would just kind of blow out of your hand if a if, strong gust yeah, of wind. That's also out. valid for the Note 2 too. Well, it, it's heavier. It's it's not. They didn't really cut weight on the Note two. They just slapped well, it all together. Screen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's heavy. Even without the battery in it, it's it's heavier. Right. But um, <clears throat> to that point, I'm saying that just use a better material, a thicker plastic. Like uh, you have your Nexus Seven, right? Yeah, right here. Yeah. And you have the foam pad. The back of that feels amazing. Yeah. And it's cheap plastic. It's this soft touch plastic, and, and not only is it is it like cheap plastic, but and it but it's stippled. It it feels nice because it offers a little bit of, of friction. And you know, okay, next to the I'm I'm putting the Nexus Seven right next to the Galaxy Note Two, and yeah, next to the Note Two, you know, the Nexus Seven lo looks I will say this less premium if you just flip them over and put them on their faces because Samsung has really has a the market cornered on this awesome kind of faux faux metallic hairline aluminum brushed metal finish. Uh, that's well, not that's not real brushed. metal. No, it is though. It's like a smooth chrome. No, it's not. It's not smooth. It's brushed. It's brushed horizontally across the back. I mean, I have the the gray one. I think yours is just scratched. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, and none of them look anywhere near as good as the back on the Ative S, which I also have here, and whose after the buzz episode should air today, um, assuming uh, it. Yeah, it will. It'll get published later today. And the Ative S looks just gorgeous, and it's a real shame that it didn't make it to uh, any kind of relevance. But um, I I don't know. I I think that there is a really really good case to be made for using cheaper plastic. <laughs> That feels good in the hand, but that you can apply a pattern to. The Nexus Seven is a very good example of that. I don't the think we'll Galaxy see that on the three though. I, the Galaxy Nexus is another great oh, yeah. example. It's cheap plastic, very thin, but that phone felt so much better, so much sturdier. Oh, I loved the Galaxy Nexus in the hand. Tony, Bring did you ever back. have one of those? Uh, the what? The Galaxy Nexus? Uh, no, I only played with yours, Nexus. Uh -huh. No, that's what she said here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And with Jaime's Nexus. Okay, and now they're uh -huh. one and the same. Yeah, yes. I mean, just bring that back. 
Bring it back. Agreed. I, I, I don't even. They don't have to go metal. Three. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, no, have, they to don't, go don't go have to metal. go metal at all. No, you can do different fun stuff with plastic. Yeah. Well, all right. We have we have to move on from the Note Three. But let me let me tell you my prediction because I didn't have an input on what I expect from the Note Three or yeah. what I think it will be. What, Just what it will be a on? one sentence feedback. No, 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 please go. I think, and I'm gonna I'm gonna phrase like those stupid logical IQ questions. The the Note Three will be for the S4 exactly what the Note 2 was for the S3. Yeah. Meaning they will look most probably the same. The Note 2 is not the device, it's not the launch where Samsung introduces new things. So I'm expecting same looks, same build quality, um, maybe a faster Exynos Octa processor with LTE support and proper 4G bands for all the world, um, 1080p Super AMOLED screen, a little bit smaller bezel, larger screen and boom there's your note three and did you mention the camera already 13 the camera the same cameras yeah. on the s4 yeah yeah well just one counterpoint and we can move on um yeah the whole note itself the the note line is a new venture so if you look at it like that um new at you have an s pen you have things that no other galaxy devices have mm. so it, it was it, when it was first introduced, but now at its second and third iteration is just, just yeah, it's, a product. It's maturing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I, I don't believe that anything will happen, but I'd love for it to. So just stop killing my dreams, Tony. <laughs> I think next year, no. Next year will be the year for a huge S5 and Note 4 redesign. And that's yeah. that's going to be probably the phone to get. And I wonder if the roots of that redesign will start with a, uh, with a cellular phoneization of the Galaxy Player. 5.8 like we i think i wrote a piece about that a while ago where you like that that galaxy player with the front facing speakers the 5.8 inch screen right i i you, would like you to said see that a... you said that like i would have like four <laughs> years ago front <laughs> face and speakers <laughs> y'all y'all ever seen them front face and speakers hey <laughs> uh, let's talk about snapdragon hey y'all seen no, that it's... snapdragon Snapdragon. Snapdragon. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Now I've, I've now I've just lost everything. Uh, can we? Can you? Can you guys tell me why I need to be excited about the Snapdragon 800? Because Stephen Shank phrases it beautifully in the first uh, store, uh, opening line of this: LG LS 980 Android creates a Snapdragon 800 mystery, where he says Qualcomm Snapdragon 800. If mention of that chip doesn't send a little shiver down your spine. You haven't been paying close enough attention to this year's hot new SOC launches. Correct. True enough, Stephen. I <laughs> I was there at CES, but I uh, God, I, I I just it takes a lot to get me excited about chips. I'll give you two things to be excited about. First one, uh, so the the 600 is already a super fast processor. Right. And you see the 600 in the HTC One and the Galaxy S4. The S4. That is correct. And the 800 ridiculous. is even faster. But what the 800 will have. And the 600 doesn't have is the super fast charging. What? Wait, no. The Snapdragon 600 does have that. It does not have that. Wait a I, minute. I read the white paper on it. What? No, you what? have not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, guys. I, I wasn't aware, and maybe I'm exposing a bit of ignorance on my part, but I wasn't aware that uh, CPUs had or system on chips had anything to do with the fast charging of the battery. Yes. Well, it's it's, it's called your quick charge 2.0. Yeah, your your CPU is it it controls a lot of things. Uh, wireless technology, for instance, if you don't have support, you can't have LTE and you right. know, things well, like that. Yeah, that's that's clear. But I yeah. I, I didn't know that. I, I thought the battery stuff was completely isolated. I thought it had its own dedicated kind of sub processor or something. And who knew there was a Snapdragon two hundred? Huh. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, we knew this, didn't we? Oh no, I maybe I, I didn't. I'm gonna pretend like I knew it. I totally knew that. I knew, I knew it. Go back and learn something. So the, there is a dispute as to whether this uh, 800 supports or the 600 supports fast no, charging. It's, there's, there's no dispute. So, <laughs> no, no, no. Qualcomm Quick Charge 1.0 is integrated for, uh, inside the Snapdragon 600, and Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 is integrated in the Snapdragon 800. Ah, the oh, 1.0 oh. is basically the standard, which it takes four hours for me to charge the one, okay. but the 800 will have two. 2.0, which will probably charge in under one hour. Wow. Well, yeah, that's okay. Interesting. I knew I'd read Quick Charge. Come on now. You can't expect me to memorize numbers. <laughs> Come on. Oh, what, what difference? Of Virgin, <laughs> Just Galaxy, say Galaxy S2, right, Galaxy S5. What, what yeah, I was a different. <laughs> I skimmed. I get some credit, right? I skimmed. <laughs> okay, so 
Uh, we have a we have a big version leap in quick charging there. That is cool. That's probably a whole different conversation in itself. But also, um, one of the things that I, I think that I was expecting in this leap from 600 to 800 was that maybe, you know, I think if you don't pay a lot of attention to chips, you could very easily associate 800 with octa core, and that is not the case at all. The Snapdragon 800 is still a quad core chip set. And uh, but it, it can run at a max of what two point three gigahertz? Is that right? That's not necessarily the the key point and takeaway here. While while we cannot dismiss that, definitely yes, yeah, it will be a super fast processor at two Plus. two point something, two point two. Okay. Well, what it is has, the key takeaway then? It has also an updated GPU. It will have the Adreno three thirty GPU versus the Adreno the 320. three twenty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so better that's, camera that's the, performance as okay. well. Yeah. I see. I see. I, if I recall well, from the top of my head, up to 51 megapixels. 55. 55. 55. Yeah, I stand wow. correct. So, not yet. Yeah, I, got, I have the white paper up now. Where's the EOS? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. And then, so this, is, this particular rumor is associated with a, uh, a device that Sprint servers describe. It's an LG-made device called the LS980, which I think a lot of people have been... Uh, speculating to be the follow-up to the Optimus G, the Optimus G sequel. But uh, LG has already started, as Stephen points out, using 980 in reference to the Optimus G Pro, because the AT&T version is the E980. So this device that we're talking about might, in fact, be the Sprint version of the Optimus G Pro. And if that shipped with a with the Snapdragon 800, I think we can all agree that would be uh, that would be a very interesting, if maybe a little bit of a niche coup for Sprint. I don't think it's going to happen because Sprint doesn't want to cannibalize its own products. And on the other hand, I think that uh, I'll read that, Taylor, just in a second. I forgot what I was about to say. Again, I hate multitasking in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, so, that's just uh, for reference. Yeah, I I, th- I think that the LS and the E categories are two different categories. So while the Optimus G Pro might be the E980, the LS980 will be a follow-up to the LS970, which is the Optimus G. And in this case, the LS980 will be the G2. That could be. I, You know, that is de- it definitely wouldn't be the first time we'd seen manufacturers alter uh, model numbers based on carrier wishes. Obviously, we see the – just look at the Galaxy S4 launch in the U.S. and they all have different model numbers. It's like SPHL720 yeah. or SGHI something for uh, – what's it called? For AT and T, but uh, I th- we'll see. This is not going to be something where we're waiting forever on. Obviously, the eight hundred is um, is a big deal. It was just nice to get a refresher on why it is a big deal. Before we jump into the next topic, because it is related somewhat, That's and right. we're we're still in Android. Yeah. Don't you guys find it weird that Google I/O happens next week and we have no leaks, we have no rumors, we have no implications or or hints of what what might happen yeah. aside from yeah. the usual blah blah blah. I'll be honest yeah. with you, I keep forgetting I/O is coming up because we're not getting any kind of crazy leaks out of it. So I mean, yeah. the Nexus oh, Seven is up for a refresh. And Nexus no, Seven, like the the seven inch tablet, or uh, something to the effect like a, a successor to the Nexus 7. Um, we won't see a new phone because the Nexus 4 wasn't released until uh, November. Yeah. Uh, no no upgrades on the Nexus 10 unless they add new storage capacities. Same thing with the 4. Um, but what I'm really looking forward to, and most people probably aren't, they've probably already forgotten about it, but the Nexus Q. Nah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody, like, <laughs> eh, eh, you always get that. And, and if I ever say anything about the Nexus Q on, on Twitter, everybody gives, like, just gives me hell over it. They're like, why would you even still use that thing? You're the only person ever that's ever done anything with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I don't know if I you saw it, well, I don't know if you saw my video on the, the IR blasters on the HTC One and the Galaxy S4. I have my Nexus Q hooked up to my television running CyanogenMod 10.1. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's cool from a from a, like a from a geek perspective, and it's fun to be, like use a keyboard with that and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know, like TV integration with my home entertainment, like integrating my mobile lifestyle with my home entertainment systems has never blown my skirt up. I've never gotten excited about that. Nothing I've seen I'm, from Samsung or HTC has made me has made me get excited about it. The only thing that I like is my Apple TV hooked up to my TV because that, that that's lets me stream what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, Apple did that without sounding like a fanboy. Apple did that for like years now, and and it's basically the same concept. It does run iOS, not Android. But then again, right. it has complete integration with your TV, computers, tablets, yeah. phones. 
And uh, everything like, aside from the fact that the Nexus Q, I think the Nexus Q looks awesome, and it's just like black yes, sphere yes. hanging out. Like, why? I don't understand what the uh, what the value proposition is for me. If I already use Apple TV, I get why it's exciting in the down the road why it will be exciting for regular consumers especially as android keeps accelerating in its in its market share you know because, consumption but go ahead because i'm part of the google ecosystem i buy my movies from google play but yes 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 so yeah, i've yes. always wanted something to stream my play movies to my television and that was the answer and luckily uh, i didn't have to pay anything for it so for android fans that q might be what the apple tv is for apple fans right and and by the way, I will say that since I don't use an iOS device with regularity, there, there's a big gap in my Apple TV like uh, usefulness. But exactly. yeah, no, the Q. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I, I would get a Q. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad product. All I'm saying is, no, I think you should be excited well, for for the new yeah. one or whatever. No, the original one was a flop. That's why Google never sold it. Right. I mean, it it was overpriced and it didn't do much of anything. So out of the box, it was kind of a waste. But yeah. There's so much potential for for Google to do something awesome with it. So that's um, what you're excited about for I/O. Yeah, you're yeah. Excited to see something out of that. I'm excited for the Nexus Seven, and uh, maybe we'll get a glimpse of four four dot three. Or do, do we think that's too early? Uh, I think that we will have a some sort of a minor Android update, which will not be Jelly Bean. It will be probably an in between thing with the new rumors. Even though logic dictates that is that it, this is the time for Jelly Bean, but or Key Lime Pie or. Key uh, key lamp, I, yeah, yeah. Key yeah. Sorry, I mean, Jelly Bean's been around for a year now, so yeah, 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 yeah. Let's uh, let's yeah. just quickly hold on, touch hold on, on. Wait, quick, quick, I just want to, yeah, yeah. What? yeah. <laughs> go, Taylor, go. See, this is why we're here um, for ninety minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say that I might have an aneurysm if they're giving out glass at I/O because oh, I've heard dude. I've heard rumors. No way. Do you think they'll I've heard give rumors? Out glass? I mean, last year they they sold um, pre-orders to explorers for fifteen hundred dollars. But now they're talking about a, a price point that's anywhere from two hundred dollars to six hundred dollars, and they've given out crazier stuff than that. I mean, last year I know everybody that was there walked out with a uh, Nexus Four, not a Nexus Four, a Galaxy Nexus, a Nexus Seven, a Nexus Q, and a Chromebook. All that together? All of that together. That was what everyone at I/O got last year. All the attendees okay. that went to all the events. The moment I'll see Michael Fisher on camera. With not his gunner optics, but with a Google Glass, I'll stop watching his videos. <laughs> well, get <laughs> ready to is... stop watching, Tony, because I'm trying to find one of those glass pieces real quick. Oh, oh, oh you lose a viewer. <laughs> I need to get in touch with that guy. I forgot to tell him yeah, that I need did. to get Yes, you do. You totally We'll do. talk about this later today. Yeah. This um, is not what I wanted to say. Quick trivia. If you, uh, I mean, okay, Google Nexus 7 is the name of the 7 inch tablet, it is due for a refresh. Quick trivia. If you are Google, what's the name of the tablet? Google Nexus 7 2? Google no. Nexus 7.1. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm Google. kidding. And have a slightly <laughs> incremental screen size bump. Now, you know what yeah, they're like, going to do? They're that's gonna... one of the worst things you could ever do is name a device after its screen size. Because, because yeah. <laughs> how do you, you follow it get... up? And two, you can't just bump the screen size every time. So. I don't think what that's if... going to be a problem this year. I, don't, I, I think that they're going to react to the changing landscape and they're going to react to, this, to the pressure of phablets pushing screen sizes up. And they're going to re release a competitor to the Note 8, and it's going to be the Nexus 8. I really do think it's going to be a bigger screen device. I was about to say something like that. Now, with the Nexus 7 being an Asus device and the Nexus 7 3G being also a second Nexus 7, there's two Nexus 7s done by Asus. What if now Google plays with Samsung for a second Nexus tablet in addition to the uh, Nexus 10.1 and come out with a Nexus 8.0 since the Note 8.0 is there and the technology is there. If there were a Nexus 8 uh, that was in the form of the of the Note 8.0, except without that stupid physical home button and without the hyperglaze, and I'd miss the S Pen, but I, I would totally buy it. Yeah, the camera. A camera yeah. hump on a tablet just. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, uh. I, I'm going to put in one thing for my wish list, and I know it's outlandish. It's crazy. It's probably not ever going to happen again, or not. I won't say ever, ever, but not this year. Not this year, and not at this I/O. I want another HTC Nexus. Oh. I do. I do. I told. I told uh, Jeff that in our in our in our little meeting at CES I said he said what do you want I said if there's one thing that would just make my life complete right now another HTC Nexus a a refresh of the Nexus 1 with modern specifications and a little bigger Well Taylor you have your first 
<laughs> yeah. The first, the that first is, is not, as close as you can get. That is not the Nexus One. Let's talk about uh, a different manufacturer. Let's talk about a manufacturer we haven't uh, given a lot of love recently. I want to talk about Motorola very briefly. Stephen wrote an excellent piece called uh, Motorola's X Phone is Still Just a Rumor and I'm Already Let Down, <laughs> which is just, you know, wah, wah. But man, <laughs> reading this piece, I just, uh, I, I can't disagree with, disagree with him. Stephen really, Stephen Shank uh, really sets the, sets the tone here. He, he sets the scene, he says, this is the bed that Motorola made. Here are these rumors that came out of that, this captivating X Phone. And uh, we're now seeing leaked images that seem to indicate that Motorola, having strayed into this area where with the Razer and the Razer Max, where they were like, wow, we finally found our design, our design <laughs> language, like this sharp, this Kevlar, these angles, it's mean, it's like a, like a big, nasty truck. And we love that about it. Now for a wheelie. And now, yeah, and now it's like, okay, <laughs> we're done with that. Be, uh, you know? and, and part of the explanation for that might be that it might be Google's influence finally starting to take hold after the acquisition, which, as we all know, takes forever uh, for that kind of stuff to happen. But I'm looking at this kind kind of rounded object on this leak that, you know, to cover CYA um, may or may not be legit. Uh, it looks a lot like a Nexus 4 yeah. that somebody took some, like, uh, like, like a belt sander to the corners and made them a little bit wider radius. Yeah, they, um, uh, that device has no volume rocker. Is that true? Yes. There was a video that was, re uh, that leaked several months ago. I don't remember exactly when. But it was a video, maybe last month. But it. I know I covered it. Yeah. And yeah. The, the guy was. That. Yeah. There, there were two things that were really, really strange about this phone. Um, one, there was no volume rocker. The guy held it and twisted it around in front of the camera and everything. No volume rocker. And the rumor before that video came out was that it would have a touch panel uh, volume slider. Yeah, we've seen that before on devices uh, on a, an HTC smart device. I think back in the day. It oh, wasn't that's a... good. So when you hold your phone, you, you will just play with the volume without no. intending it. To. No, I, think... I do that on Samsung devices anyway because their volume rockers are so <laughs> it, it, sensitive. It, it, and this device that I can't remember the name of, it was like a Motorola Q competitor. Maybe it was the Dash. Uh, and it, instead of a jog dial on the side, it had a touch-sensitive strip on the side. Um, but I don't remember what device it was. Maybe somebody out there, a commenter, can, can, can let us know. But anyway, go ahead. And there was one more thing, and I can't remember for the life of me. Oh yeah, the screen. The screen, yeah, yeah, the reflection. I think it was. I think it was a reflection of a window in front of the guy or behind him, depending on how you what perceive that. What, what, what happened? But it, there were two lines that went down the middle of the display, and he was tilting it at different angles, which made me think that there's no way it was a reflection. But I don't. I don't know. Um, there were two lines that went down through the display that made it look like it was raised in the middle. It was very or, or, strange. Or on the sides. It yeah, raised or on the, on the sides. sides. It was very strange. Uh, I don't know what it was. I think it might have been a reflection, but I don't know. I feel like a conspiracy theorist trying to yeah depict like one of those like the freaking Sasquatch video from yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, I think one one thing that uh, at least some of us can agree on is that we're glad to see that Circles widget. If nothing else, I'll be excited to see this based on the Circles widget alone. But uh, I, I I don't know. I I don't could think we what could we see that at I/O. We we it's it's possible. I keep trying to kind of dig with our PR people at um, various you know whether it's Motorola, whether it's Verizon, whether it doesn't really matter. But I'm just like, so what what about that? And you know we'll kind of get these answers. It's like can't <laughs> tell you about that for another few weeks or something like that. And I'm like, okay, all right. At least we know what when can we when when we can expect something interesting. According to the latest yeah. rumors, the X phone itself has been postponed. Yeah, there's a too delay late there, right? late autumn, which gave birth again to new speculation that this might be. The new Nexus phone and blah blah blah. Right, yeah. right. So either way, I need to text. I need to text my BFF, Michael. Yes, you do. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Actually, that's who I was talking to. Yeah, I uh, figured. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on to Windows Phone. We spent a lot of time in Android. Unless you gentlemen have some unfinished business in Android that we need to address real quick. Always. <laughs> and Android, the land of unfinished business. All right, we're already at fifty-two minutes and. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but we have no iOS today, so that is very right. true because there's nothing worth talking about on iOS. This Even day. though I'll, I'll I'll just drop a sentence when the time comes. Oh, all right. Uh, Nokia Lumia 928. Can we agree, gentlemen? The the least the, the worst kept secret in history. 
This is a device. Or the, or the best controlled leak. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> everything is controlled leaks now. If well, this, not everything, but most. If this 928 was a controlled leak, it's a stroke of genius because, <clears throat> like, not only are there leaks on the internet, which we expect to see, there's landing pages and stuff, but there's now a, what? A, ads. A, a, yeah. There's a press, <laughs> there's a print ad, and this isn't even the most impressive bit, but there's a print ad in what? Vanity Fair magazine that has a two page spread. It says, right, Nokia Lumia 928. It's got the Verizon branding right over the screen, but also a freaking. <clears throat> A freaking billboard Bill. <laughs> alongside the highway that was Somebody's up for not what? Trying. It was up for one day and then it was taken down. Is that right? It was, it's something Somebody's like that. not trying to keep a secret. <laughs> yeah. well, that's that's probably the point. I don't think that this phone will warrant any events or anything more than just a press release from Nokia Agreed. and Verizon. Agreed. I don't think unless we see this at the uh, at the London event, which no we, chance. You, well, you don't think we'll see it like just as I'm not saying the London event would be for this device specifically, but I feel like this is one of those things they would throw in at the end after revealing something really impressive. Even and though, like, and Michael, thing. you might be right because the official renders, which Nokia themselves published on the landing page, are missing the Verizon branding. Are they really? Yes, oh, they yeah, are. Look at that. I see that. There's, so there's no Verizon branding on the on the landing page, but there is one on the Vanity Fair ad. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Photoshopping. This, yeah. What, what are they doing? Here? That is best. Now that looks interesting. Now the the, the side of this device definitely <laughs> looks uh, like it's reflecting more light than I would expect. Actually, the got, the whole physics of that, or not physics, but like the the whole layout to that, just the the, the perspective is off. Yeah, it does. I'm just looking. This doesn't make any sense. Like the lower edge of this device <laughs> appears to disappear under that guy's thumb. <laughs> it's got a um. It's got a very chamfered edge there, like. I right, guess. But, but the top surface doesn't. Like the left side oh, yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Guys, right side what doesn't. are you looking at? Um, the, sorry, uh, look at the title image page. on the on the landing page post. Oh, I was looking at, at like, the other. You can post. see the bottom on the bottom of that device. You can see the whole edge all the way up to his thumb, and on the top, all you see is the profile of the yeah. edge. Yeah, what is going on with this image? <laughs> Somebody this... got carried away in Photoshop and and apparently. Got... Well, oh. check out check out this post, which has renders. So there's renders in addition, and this is on... Okay, so this is the post that Tony was pointing to me right before we started broadcasting, which is called, listeners, Nokia Lumia 928 versus Apple iPhone 5 versus Samsung Galaxy S3 video quality comparison. And this includes in its title image a render of this mystery device. Yeah, so you can see that that edge, but the, the perspective of this landing page is just off. Yeah, yeah, it definitely <laughs> it's is. It's way off. <laughs> now, Tony, tell us a little bit about this comparison, uh, this video quality comparison. I'll drop the link in the rundown. Well, this is basically a video a la Nokia. Nokia used used to, and from what I see, continues to do comparison videos. And in this particular video, they are pushing the low-light performance and optical image stabilization on the 928, which has the same sensor, the 8.1, uh, the 8.7 megapixel sensor, as on the Lumia 920, as expected. And they're putting it against the low-light sensitivity uh, of the iPhone 5 and the Galaxy S3, not four. Maybe they couldn't get a device. Anyways, did they, did they use a, an SLR this time. Um, oh, I haven't checked. <laughs> I haven't checked, even though yes, that was me last year. <laughs> but uh, I, um, I'm not going to say anything uh, because. No, you, you can I definitely usually, tell this is with a, a phone. <laughs> I usually don't judge camera quality based on any comparisons, um, OEM comparisons or other set comparisons. I judge camera quality when I do the comparisons in my controlled environment where I my eyes can see what I have captured. Do you know what, camera comparisons, when we do them, it, it sends me on the trip of a lifetime between like highs and lows because the actual work of capturing the images is some of my favorite work I do at Pocket Now. I just basically walk around town, find various lighting conditions, and take photos with like five different phones. That's fun. The yep. real, but the, then you come back home, or you come back to the office, and you spend, you're like six hours later, you've been in front of the computer for more than half a day, and your eyes are bloodshot, and you're like maneuvering photos around. And Embedding, like, captioning. Yeah, oh, my God. It's the worst ever. The, the worst experience I've had at Pocket Now was the one comparison uh, before and after the update. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I, I know I put probably 15 or 16 hours into that. <laughs> and then like the phone like updated and wiped itself. And I lost everything I'd done. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you post you post the results of all your hard work, and five minutes later, the first comment is, gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 
Uh, let's move on from the Lumi Nine Twenty Eight. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna see it, and it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be exciting. Uh, but I don't want to get off of Nokia too quickly because we have to talk about this uh, this this shareholder kind of venting session that that apparently occurred. This was posted May seventh. Have you guys read this? This was posted yesterday at five p.m. I have I read haven't. just the headlines. Okay, <laughs> I finished work at three a.m. I didn't read anything. No, I feel you. So let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Apparently, uh, there was there was a recent Nokia shareholders meeting where investors voiced their frustrations with the choices the company has made and. Uh, these shareholders apparently urged uh, CEO Stephen Elop to take steps to bring its success back on track. Um, one of these pre- people says, after taking, time, t- after taking time to explain that he truly believed Elop to be a nice guy, one of these shareholders <laughs> continued, Are you aware that results are what matter? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Please switch to another road. Jesus. Wow. wow. Right? Yeah, um, I read somewhere, I can't remember where it was, but there was a, a, an article about Nokia and someone claimed that um, Stephen was a, or Mr. Elab, I guess I should say, yes. was a Trojan horse Trojan from horse. Yeah. a Trojan horse from Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Oh, they keep saying that since, since, since so, uh, February 2011. Yeah. 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 So I think Nokia mm-hmm. has made all the right decisions and chose all the right paths they could have chosen except for one. And if Android, that is correct. Android. I'm not saying I'm not saying that Windows Phone was a was a bad choice to regret. I'm saying that they might have maybe thought of of, of the future and thought numbers and have a separate lineup for Windows phones and a separate lineup for, for Android. But that aside, the, the hardware is top-notch as usual. They're pioneering uh, cameras and, and, and everything which is imaging related. So it all comes down to the road and switching roads. Currently, the road is Windows phone and switching roads would probably mean by, from what I interpret from that person's thoughts, switching to Android, which is never going to happen. No, totally, it, it totally meant YOLA. Or Yala. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, that would be interesting if Nokia were to get like oh, yeah. all those people back that that, that left in, in in disgust <laughs> or not disgust. I shouldn't say that. We've talked to them, and that wasn't the case. But but uh, here's the thing. I think it would have been a very very bad move for Nokia to try and do both of these because look at what HTC HTC basically did that, right? HTC is in a situation where they had a really good Android reputation, which Nokia didn't have, but that's the one thing that's different. And HTC decided, well, we're going to make a line of premium Windows phones, and we're going to make a line of premium Android phones. And then what happened? The Windows phones didn't do terribly well because Windows phone is not doing terribly well. Um, it's improving, but it's not doing terribly well overall. And then HTC basically shut up completely about the 8X. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen and, any HTC sourced advertisements about that. It's Microsoft pushing those phones. And I said that a couple of weeks ago and you were like, no, 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 they didn't. Really? <laughs> yeah. I said uh, they like they pushed everything they had. They put everything they had into the 8X. And then like a few months later, they're like. Bailed. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, like, so, so all right. So maybe. So if that's the case, then 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 I owe you an apology. Yeah, no, you're right. But, we, but the point is that, like, the, yeah, if they did that, what if Nokia did that? What if Nokia had another crutch to lean on in the form of Android? Do you think they would have, like, transformed Windows Phone to the extent that they have? Because I think they're doing a lot of good for the Windows Phone platform. They they have made Windows Phone. I'm sorry. That was I should have said Tony. Because oh. <laughs> Tony, Tony was trying to talk just then, and I, I, oh, I kept. I didn't hear him. Rolling. No, I just, I just wanted to say one thing. We have a, a saying around here, which, if I translate, sounds something like this: uh, Rather than being the last person in a metro, mm. I prefer being the first person in a small village. And this is probably what what Nokia thought. Talking about yeah. kind of like the big fish in a small pond thing, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I do yeah. believe that if they would have chosen both paths at the same time, they could have pulled it off. And and I, I would I hate being an analyst, but I think that by this time, so two years later, I think that they would be heavily breathing down Samsung's neck. If I were Stephen Elop, I would have been absolutely irate after being the selected. Um, partner for Windows Phone and releasing their Windows Phone device and then the next phone that comes along, the 8X, being the signature Windows Phone device or <laughs> Windows Phone 8. I think we've definitely and, covered that before. We, we oh, all yeah. agree that that's, that would be but that's it, such a... But at that point, jerk Nokia, Nokia or Nokia should have said, hey, we've got to explore options. We need to explore options. 
that would have been the call or the, the, the conversation I would have had if I were in his shoes at that very moment. Well, who's to say they didn't? I mean, I'm sure they, I mean, did, they, they, they probably did that I, very secretly, and they probably told yeah. Microsoft as much. Like, listen, you guys are being... D- oh, sh- uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, this was double beeps. Right, yeah. Are, right, are you editing mark. now? Yes, I'm, I'm going to be okay. editing now. <laughs> you know, all right, so, all right, so, f- it, so I'll say it anyway. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think you should leave this part, but with the beeps. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So, so yeah, I mean, they're like, okay, well, Microsoft, you're being f- to us. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and we're, we're exploring our options. Now, we're not going to publicize the fact that we're exploring options. And I don't think they did, right? Am I forgetting something that... Was there uh, any kind of leak or what? No, no, no leaks, but I know that they, they debunked all the Android rumors. So Yeah. I, I think that Nokia doesn't really care if, if the HTC Windows Phone 8X is or is not the signature phone because I, I don't have the exact numbers, but the vast majority of Windows Phone sales go to Nokia. So I wouldn't mind being called an intern and have twice as much or three times as much salary as, as the editor-in-chief. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that um, I can understand the the shareholders' position here. I mean, the company has been doing has been doing very well for the Windows Phone ecosystem. I think we owe a lot to Nokia. But I also think that if I were an investor in the company, I too would be very frustrated at this point. But, right, but can I? If those those shareholders had at one point a word to say back in 2011 when when that strategic alliance was signed you, I, I mean think, but right but I, I don't think anybody could predict what the landscape was was going to be like back then i think there was a lot more hope for windows phone back oh, then definitely. being the big upset it's like oh here they come developers yeah, developers developers, yeah, developers right exactly now why take it out on steve Nila because of a decision which has been i believe collectively made yeah, well, I think that's kind of this shareholder mentality, right? It's like, yeah. well, we were with you back then, but now we're not, and you're the one that's going to hang for it. Right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, I do have a question. So if Windows, or not Windows, if, if Nokia was to bail on Windows Phone altogether, would the platform just die? Wow. No, it wouldn't, yeah. but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't do nearly as well. That's a really solid question. So I just made this point in the Ativas oh. uh, after the buzz. Um where I, I was like, listen, one of the most significant things that's happened to the Ativa S since it, we first reviewed it was that Nokia released its here suite for the entire Windows Phone lineup. That's here navigation, that's here drive beta, and it's here uh, transit. And that has like single-handedly improved the entire the worth of the entire Windows Phone line. I would say, no exaggeration, like 15 to 20 percent for a lot of people, myself included. So it, no, Nokia is a massively significant force to Windows Phone. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't think Microsoft would what, would let Windows Phone die. Just, just no, saying. Microsoft um, definitely wouldn't. But Tony, what yeah. was your answer to that question? It, it worries me a lot that after two and a half years, Windows Phone is still below five percent. They're stagnating. According to the latest numbers, they they've seen an increase of 001 percent. I mean, <clears throat> and that's. That's not Nokia's fault. That's not HTC's fault. That's not Samsung's fault. And you know what? That's not even Microsoft's fault. I think that people who at that point said that it is too late for Microsoft to join this game, they might have been right, even though back then, yes, I defended Windows Phone and Microsoft with my last last breath. Oh, I, I, I kind of disagree with you, Tony. I blame Microsoft wholly for anything they've done here. And, and and that's not necessarily their own fault. It was just a very bad decision. The opening marketing, I've said it before, was just the worst possible thing they could have done. Um, save you from yourself or save you from your phone. People didn't want it at the time. People still don't really want it. Um, and at, this is kind of unrelated, but think of um, Paul Miller's you know, leaving the internet for a year. He thought the internet was a problem, but he found that it wasn't. And I don't think that, you know, addiction, quote unquote, to a smartphone is a problem necessarily. With the phone, it's it's more of ourselves. And I don't think a an operating system that promises to be boring, basically, appeals to anyone. So I, I kind of blame Microsoft. For the for that initial positioning that that yeah. that set them up for failure, yeah, I, I get that point. I get both points. I actually like that ad campaign, but I understand the the objection to it. Um, there there is something that 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 
kind of springs to mind here, and I just wrote a note to myself that maybe I will write an editorial on this, but, you know, we haven't heard a lot from the stock Android camp since since the Nexus 4 dropped, basically, you know, and the Jelly Bean 4.2 was a big deal and whatever, but we, we haven't really heard a lot out of stock Android. Uh, obviously, iOS has been, you know, kind of stagnant, and we're waiting for a big upset there, but we really haven't heard much out of out of out of what's new about Windows Phone because there isn't like Windows Phone 8 has kind of you know come out and here are the features we announced a long time ago and we're kind of holding steady with them and the the ecosystem has been the big news right the, you know what the app titles have been added well yeah. but but I, I've got a follow on question Tony I, I, th- th- my question is does anybody think that and you guys are going to call me an idiot does anybody think that the salvation to Windows Phone might lie in finally allowing manufacturers to skin it no. Well, maybe <laughs> because because look at the response to the one. Look at look at the response to Sense Five, which has been quite positive, despite the fact that people seem to hate Blink Feed for no reason. Maybe within limitation. I say yes, but I mean like within limitation. I agree. Uh, yeah, I always you... wanted a wallpaper. Yeah, sure, but no. I think if Microsoft would allow that, that would be against their entire principle. The 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 core idea at which was at the basis of Metro UI and Windows Phone itself. Which is to to unify with a common design language across yes. everything. I mean, they they offer but, you the colors, and and that's really that's that's it. What what other things would they allow you to do while you would still keep the general design guidelines, which they push out to uh, to developers so so hard? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a tough question. But the Metro UI is not as well received in the PC world, so. To that end, they're probably uh, I mean, Windows Blue is, is supposedly going to come and, and change some things, but um, I don't I don't know. I think the the unified experience that they wanted across those three different platforms, uh, mobile, and then the, the tablet, like smartphones, tablets, and, and PCs. Um, I think that's kind of a, a pipe dream for them right now, uh, because Metro doesn't translate too well to a desktop experience. Yeah. So, well, it does. So it, maybe it, it's time if you, if you have a touchscreen on it, it does. But it, yeah. yeah, if you have a touchscreen, but if you don't, right? Um, but I, 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 I don't think to, that'll be a problem. I think that I think that problem will evaporate as everything becomes touchscreen driven. Uh, maybe. And, maybe. Well, but I, I talked to um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I talked to three or four people at the coffee shop that I go to all the time, and three of them have um, just completely gotten rid of Windows Eight. They went back to Windows Seven. Like they Jeez. purchased a separate license to go back to Windows 7 because they hated Windows 8 so much. Three of them did? Three out of the four. And the fourth one just said he just deals with it. <laughs> yeah. He said he hates it and he deals with it. So none of them actually like Windows 8. Uh, I'm going to say something bold here. I'm sorry, who did I interrupt? Uh, th- that was me, but say something bold, Tony. We haven't heard from you in a second. Uh, I, I think that it is my perception, again, that Microsoft doesn't really care that much anymore about Windows Phone. When when it was new and fresh, all we could see was Stephen Ballmer. Steve Ballmer all the time, everywhere. 2011 MWC, he was there. 2012 MWC, he talked about all the 500 features coming to Noto or Mango or whatever it was. This year, they, they were not there. We're not seeing him being that enthusiastic about Windows Phone. Remember those developers, developers, developers. No, Steve, Steve Ballmer is nowhere to be seen, and Stephen Elop is, believe it or not, in my perception, the image of Windows Phone now. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I I get that, sure, and that takes a little bit of pressure off Microsoft because they can. Then that was part of the driving force, I think, behind the partnership with Nokia in the first place. Is because Nokia now you know has to shoulder some of the burden of of pushing Windows Phone. I I, I don't know. I, I I wonder if they actually care less, or I wonder if we're just in this lull between revisions that is natural and that happens to everything. Like I said about stock Android a second ago, I don't yeah. know. Um, I I want to touch on the uh, that that. This next Surface model, I, I changed the rundown a little bit. If you want, you guys want to refresh, um, because while we're talking about the modern UI, while we're talking about Windows 8 versus Windows 7, we're hearing rumors that the next Surface model could be a smaller, cheaper variant, but also may not arrive until 2014. Which, when I read that headline, which my heart just kind of sank because I, I think even though sales might be a little bit better than than were uh, than we were expecting a couple months ago. I don't, still don't think they're they're very good. Am I wrong on that, guys? No. No, they're terrible. Uh, yeah, they're they're actually performing very poorly. 
Yeah. From what I read last, they were um, well below expectations. Right. So, and I think that the new Surface hardware is exciting because the Surface, the hardware is the best part of the Surface story. Oh, I think. yeah. I love that hardware. It, but Windows 8 so desperately needs a, a revamp. Um, You're d- talking about the RT version. And, and RT, right. It, it, that's, that's another thing, right? Ugh, ugh. So I haven't gotten any further in understanding or liking my NVX2 than I was the last time we talked about <laughs> it a month ago. And that is not because of the hardware. It's because of, of, of Windows 8. And you know, this is this is when the, the the commenters will will arise to say I don't know what I'm doing and stuff like that. And you know what? You are right. I do not know what I'm doing inside Windows 8, and I I may never in its current in, incarnation, and not for lack of trying. It's just so frustrating to have an OS that looks so pretty in the modern UI, but which works functions so so poorly. As yeah. you describe it, it, it's exactly what I felt with the first iteration of Windows Phone 7.0. Ah, sure, and I, I get that. I mean, the seven O was lacking so many features, and and yeah, I don't think I liked it. Who needs copy paste? Right, right. <laughs> but but and now I I want something. I want Windows Phone eight to go the route of Windows Phone. Win, uh, I want Windows eight to go the route of Windows Phone eight, where Windows Phone eight I have my objections to it, but I find it to be a very very useful, fun, responsive, stable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, OS, and Windows eight has to has to match that and it's harder to do that on on the desktop but it just has to yeah the only thing keeping me from actually using a windows 8 or windows phone 8 device wow i hate that yeah i know (laughs) i hate it so much (laughs) but the only thing keeping me from using windows phone now is is google services um windows right and we've and and google don't get along well yeah um the apps are are slowly coming along and that's definitely are that's one of the things that was keeping me away um and and the hardware is it's compelling, which is something I can't say for every Android manufacturer. Um, right. But, yeah, I need Google services. And, and I think for Microsoft to to figure out that not everyone wants to use SkyDrive and, and Hotmail or Live or whatever, they, they killed Hotmail. Or not Hotmail. What did they kill? They killed something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, not everybody wants to use their services or their ecosystem because they don't necessarily – um, compare or, or translate that well to for, for basic consumers. Um, they, they definitely work well for enterprise, but for basic consumers, there are better, easier services. Yeah, but I think that's not the problem with the new users. It's a problem for, for switching. I understand that Windows Phone is not stealing users from Android or iOS at the, the extent they would have expected or they hoped they would. Right. What What is interesting in my mind is that they're not even getting new customers who are getting their for smartphones for the first time. Right. Well, but, uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that I can go on an iPhone, and I have all of my Google services, and they're almost, almost as good as they are on an Android phone. You go to Windows Phone, and that's not necessarily the case. No, it's not only it's just, no. It's you can take that qualifier right out of there. It's not at all the case. Yeah, yeah that's it, that's what I was defending. I was saying that yes, you are tied in with with a, a an ecosystem or an offering that it, you're not prone to switch. But if you would yeah. be a first time smartphone user, and you wouldn't be tied in. Gmail and all the Google ecosystem and offerings, then you will be probably more tempted to go, okay, let's go live, let's go SkyDrive. But no, yeah, people don't do that. But I, I, and I don't even know if that's the case. Like I say that to throw a bone to Microsoft and stuff, but I know at least over here in the, in the circles I travel in, and there are many and varied, um, you know, Microsoft doesn't have any, any, any cool power whatsoever. There is None. nobody saying that they want to None. use Outlook.com. There's nobody excited about IE10, no matter how good the commercial state is, no matter how awesome the music on those commercials is. Like, it's like Microsoft is not cool, um, nope. by and large. And, you know, Google is, I think, cooler. I think people are more afraid of it, certainly. But it also has unleashed a whole lot of products in the public that, that work very well, especially in a mobile sense. So I would say that, Taylor, I, I agree with you, and I would put it, my ideal would be a Microsoft... A Microsoft Windows phone that interfaces deeply with Google's ecosystem. That would yeah, be my I, ideal thing. Because just because you use Google services doesn't mean that you necessarily really enjoy using Android. The front end, Android, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, what if what if I could access all that through a UI that I prefer, which is Windows Phone? Yeah. Um, and and despite what the television show says, the ad spots in the television show, nobody says Bing it. 
Nobody says just bing, bing it. it. No. Just bing it. Nobody says that. Whenever I try oh and God, say that unironically that? in a situation, people are just like, what? LOL. Nobody yeah. says bing it. And, <laughs> and I just, I literally cannot stand bing. Come on, Taylor. Uh, I, I can't you, know what? you know why? Because you've been scrooged all your life. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I use Let Me Google That For You for everything, oh, for no. even my personal uses. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me. I have an announcement. <laughs> oh, what's your yeah. announcement? Not related at all. So oh, it's right. Android related. HTC first, awesome device. Taylor reviewed it. Eight out, uh, eight out of 10. Good score. It was 99.99 on AT&T. Now it is point. $99. You've got to be kidding me. It's 99 Guys, cents now. Guys, go grab it, kill Facebook Home, and use stock vanilla Android yeah, for 99 cents. Great phone. Um, someone tweeted me yesterday. I think it was from Droid Dog. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, uh, Brooks Barnard. He um, he said, I have to send my, my first back tomorrow, and, and I'm sad. And and that's how I was. Like, I didn't want to send it back. It was actually a really nice phone. Yeah, it'll grow but, on you. Yeah, yeah. on a two-year contract. Yeah, my right, only complaint with that phone was its size. It, I mean, yeah. my, my Hulk hands were just too big for it. So uh, this is an interesting thing. Taylor, you said that somebody tweeted at you from Droid Dog, and you don't remember who it was. I'm putting out a call to Brooks any Barnard. commenter who oh, – I'm sorry. Well, yeah, but initially you didn't know who it was. I'm putting <laughs> okay. out a call to any commenter who can help. Um, there's a guy out there who runs a website that's called, like, smartphonereview.com or, or something similarly sounding. It's, it's very straightforward in the title. And he's based in New York State. He's a, he's a bald guy, uh, maybe about uh, all of our ages. And we see him at a lot of events. And he was our buddy for a while. But <laughs> damned if I can't find his website. And uh, he ha- actually held a place in us in line at one of these big Samsung events recently. And Good I've been wanting to thank him forever. But I don't know where he, what site he's at. And I've even forgotten his name because I'm horrible with names. Oh, yes, footnote two. If I ever meet you in person, I will shake your hand. You will tell me your name. By the time our handshake is done, I will have forgotten your name. I'm, see, Amen. I'm, I'm just such a – I'm so dumb about that. My brain just doesn't hold on to names. I'm too ADD when I meet people and I'm like, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, what was your too. name again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it takes like four or five times. So anyway, if anybody can find this, 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 um, this really nice guy, awesome dude who runs this site, that would be great. Leave a should, comment. You uh, should post on Craig's list. Yeah, I like should. The, yeah, like the misconnections. Yeah, <laughs> you held our place in line, and and we were, we were friends. <laughs> then you disappeared. What happened? One for every city. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> closing out Windows Phone, the YouTube app. After oh my god, after like two years, has finally seen a major update. I haven't. You, mean you didn't like using the browser. <laughs> yeah, like the old <laughs> app. If you don't use Windows Phone, the old app was basically a a, a link to the. To the mobile YouTube, like the shortcut YouTube. aggregator. Yeah. Ugh. Oh my god. So I hate it when BlackBerry did like like you you yeah. download the app from from BlackBerry yeah, you World. Spend all this time downloading the app, and then it's like, You're oh, like, this yes, is just a finally shortcut. have it, and you click it, and it takes you to the browser. M.YouTube.com like, in the browser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. So awful. So I had a Twitter client that I downloaded. Nice. You yeah, oh, that, that did that same thing. Yeah, I'm like, it's a Twitter client. Like of all <laughs> things, you should at least. Do yeah. something like encapsulate it within the app, not a Twitter client that just takes you to mobile Twitter. Like, <laughs> so that's that's what happened with uh, with YouTube. And it's funny that you mentioned BlackBerry because BlackBerry is our last category before listener mail. Uh, uh. The uh, BlackBerry R10, I think everyone can agree, this is the prettiest device they've ever seen. Uh, has gone up in photos <laughs> against the Q10. <laughs> wow. Oh wow, this thing. Ugh. So the R10 looks wow. to be a uh, budget a budget device uh, running BlackBerry 10. It looks exactly like the iPhone 1, the first original iPhone. Yeah, with like, that, y- y- yeah, with yeah, shiny does. plastic. Ugh. Man, no, that the, is the ugly. Even the volume G. buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even the volume buttons, and they, they've got their little mute button in the middle there. And um, that means it's different. They ugh. didn't copy anything. Right. No, you know, it it, it doesn't look good. Um, I feel like, though, that that's, that's missing the point or whatever. The, yes, the R10 is meant to be a budget device, and BlackBerry's... But it looks like BlackBerry's trying to to replicate their old approach, um, which is to kick out, like, a bunch of curve variants for different markets. And do, do, do we... What do we think, guys? I, I think the BlackBerry I, question is still so up in the air. I would like to hear whether you guys think that, that, it, uh, that they have a chance of surviving long enough to make this staggered approach possible. What, one thing I suggested before these two devices came out, the Q10 and Z10, um, I said BlackBerry should just trash everything they've done in the past and just start new. So bring the new operating system, but bring truly new hardware, not the same old stuff. That's what we're seeing, the same old stuff. I'm, the Q10 is 
a device that was rumored back in 2000 freaking four uh, yeah. as the Magnum. I remember reading forums. It was Crackberry forums. I would read them all the time. So this is like a bold, but it, it wasn't the bold with the touchscreen because <clears throat> this thing has no buttons. And that was what that device back then was. It had no physical like yeah, uh, navigation. Blackberry buttons. Ten wasn't wasn't rumored back then. No. I mean, like the, it's the software is the story on this thing, you know. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm saying. They should have come forward with new new hardware, not the same old same old. <laughs> granted, granted, that aside, I'm actually wanting a Q10. <laughs> so, well, we, we, the entire Pocket Now team would like a Q10. Um, as as I've mentioned, as I've said in the comments to, to a couple people, I know you guys want us listeners. Yeah. You want us to review the Q10. I definitely want to review it. Um, you know, we, we've never covered BlackBerry before. The the, Q, the Z10 was the first BlackBerry I think we ever covered, besides the mm-hmm. Storm. Maybe was it the Storm, Tony? I think yeah. On yeah. AT and T, Adam Adam Lane, he was my, my friend. Okay. Still yeah. has a storm. We're not. I, I, we're I we're not. For her we, we don't. At night. We don't have a. <laughs> We don't have a long history of covering BlackBerry, so they don't really pay much attention to us. I have to, I have to bang down their door to, to, to get BlackBerry to pay attention to us. And um, they're very nice. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I like dealing with them. But, uh, the, the, you know, we're, we're going to be delayed on getting BlackBerry devices for a while, guys. So please be patient with us as we um, build our reputation with them. E- email me after this, Michael, about yeah. BlackBerry. I will. I will. So to answer your question, I, I yeah, think about BlackBerry the same thing I, I think about Microsoft. And, and I think that they the entire situation is out of their control. And I think to explain my, my, my thoughts and my statement, BlackBerry did exactly what Microsoft did. Microsoft laid down on its laurels with Windows Mobile 6 point something, 6.5, sure. and just waited for Android and iOS to catch up. BlackBerry did the exact same thing. No new devices, no news, nothing for two or three years, a period of time in which Android and iOS were blooming, and now they're just fighting to get back something from what they lost, with approximately 70% of their market share. Absolutely. It's kind of like a trust issue. I mean, you, you, you cheat on someone or you lie to someone or, you know, break their heart, anything, and well, trying in this to case, get they that, ignored. Yeah, or, or be ignored, but the, like, trying to get that back after the fact is much harder than it was to get the first time. Yeah, exactly. Much, much more difficult. And, and, and I will say this, that we have to give them a little bit more credit, and that they did, they did try, okay? I mean, the Storm is a big joke, but they tried with the Storm. They tried with the Storm, too. <laughs> the Z10 is nice. They, they tried their well, darnest. Well, they tried with the Torch. I'm talking about everything before BlackBerry 10. Like, they actually did try branching out. The problem is they didn't go far enough, and they didn't do well enough. So, you know, they, they didn't just sit there. Separating a, a touch from a click action was brilliant, but very, very, very very poorly executed yeah i i agree i think the concept of the storm is one of the most compelling things i'd heard of i mean like a touch screen that also has have to, that has physical feedback that's awesome oh, yeah i don't think that's it, the way to do it no <laughs> yeah a single button in the middle of the display <laughs> no <laughs> yeah that was bad uh, even the, the storm too like i said i have a friend who still has the original storm and i weep for her every night i told yeah. her i would give her an iphone yeah <laughs> oh uh, I was like, please. <laughs> let's uh, move on to listener mail, unless you guys have a have a final point about no, Blackberry. I'm nostalgic. Oh, are you? Um, yeah. One thing I keep hearing for people what, say. Tony? Hold on, wait, hold on. Well, for what? I love oh, my I love my bold nine thousand. Uh, I love the original too. bold. Yeah, man. I never had it. I never owned it. But the original bold came out just as I was getting. I think my iPhone three G, the only iPhone I've ever actually bought. And um, I went into the AT and T store and I saw the bold nine thousand. I was like, oh wow. This is beautiful. And that made me miss my Curve 8350i, which nobody had. And I liked that, too. But, yeah, I agree. Best keyboard ever. No, I was a, I I was a BlackBerry my... fanboy in the day. Um, yeah. I, so was oh, I. Yes. I used to install custom apps back before. Like the, I had to install custom apps back in the day when the backlight wouldn't stay on. Like you had to install a <laughs> yeah. custom app oh, yeah. to get the backlight to turn on when you pressed a button. I had at least 20 different Blackberries. 20? Yeah, oh, I loved BlackBerry. Oh, I, crazy, I was a BlackBerry man. fanboy, like a a literal fanboy. I had the Bold 9000, the 9700, the Pearl 9130, the or not 91. Yeah, I did have that one. The 8130, the 9130, the 8330, the 80 yeah 900. Uh, and people, these are not phone numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I had all of them pretty much. Guys, I loved BlackBerry. I ran a BlackBerry site. <laughs> you know what I'm like here? I, I you know what I what I'm really 
enjoying here is that I think of as recently as six months ago, we were sitting on this very podcast, probably talking about um, th- talking about how BlackBerry was very likely to close up shop in the next few weeks. Even I think I probably said recklessly at one one time or another. And now they've got two new smartphones, soon to be three new smartphones on the market. Um, we're, we're getting here. We're, we're hearing all these returns of you know. Uh, it, all these rumors of high return rates and stuff, and some of them are being debunked and some are not. But, you know, they're still around, and they're still selling units. I, I think that's very impressive. And yeah. it, not well, they to mention, were a massive company. Right, and, and also, though, they're, they're building their ecosystem more importantly. They're not just selling units. They're also building an app ecosystem very quickly, even, even, as a resu- even if you take uh, porting from Android into account. Yeah. So that's cool. I mean, I kudos do wanna... to them. Golf clap. I do want to say one thing. I keep hearing people say Thorsten Hines. It's, yeah, it's, it's Torsten. Torsten. Yeah, yeah. Torsten just, people. Yeah. Torsten. It sounds it's like, like calling me Tyler. I'm not Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Hey. <laughs> oh, I get it all the time. I had a boss that called me Tyler every day. No. I'm like, no it's way. Taylor. I'm leaving after the it's second my, day. It's someone. Call... Yeah. But speaking of which, my name tag. don't call me See? Mike. People in the comments, don't call me Mike. I don't like that. Mick. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, what about Mikey. Oh, you yeah. Mikey. oh yeah, yes. If hey, you really Mikey. want bonus points, call me Michael Motorcycle. That'll really win you, win me over. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. What were you going to say? I was about to say that strange things happen to me when I'm on the podcast. I just had a notes application open on my computer, and while I was talking to you guys and listening and clicking left and right, and uh, I closed the notes. And at one point, I was being asked, "Do you want to save or not?" And I haven't. So, oh no. So what, 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 gentlemen? If I promised you anything by the end of this week, or I set, or you guys ask me to do something, then please oh, no. send me the email again because there was a two-page note there which is now oh, not oh, being saved. Tony, oh, I'm sorry, man. No recovery feature, huh? No, no, that's for losers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, that's for that's for reckless folks. Who would do that? Absolutely. No, we're all cowboys here. This is how we exactly. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into listener mail so we can get Tony's mind off his loss of data here. Can I, oh, I'm not sweating. If we, you guys will. Okay. <laughs> can I just say that we are almost exactly on time? We are. Well, if we, didn't, if we weren't doing listener mail, we'd be on time. We're, we're behind because listener mail, we have three pieces of listener mail. We're on time. Read on. We're not on time. Uh, Randy Muth. Randy Muth. Randy Muth. Sorry. We just talked about mispronouncing names, and I'm going to do it to all these. Randy says... Uh, hi, Michael. First off, just wanted to say I always enjoy your reviews, and all the Pocket Now team is just doing a really great job. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, Randy. Damn. So, yesterday, I rushed home since I saw that my HTC One waiting for me, but when I opened the shipping box that Sprint sent me, I had a very unpleasant surprise. There was no plastic film. All the stickers on the side to hold the two sides together were cut, and new ones were put on, and the new stickers were dirty. Sprint at first was like, oh, well. After sending, spending some time talking to a manager, Sprint is sending me a new one, but it won't get here for over a week. So, I'm just wondering, asks Randy, what your thoughts on getting a new phone where the wrapping is open? Have you seen this before or heard of this? And do you think it's petty for me to have Sprint send me a new one where the box has not been open? Randy. Randy, thank you for writing in, first of all. Second of all, sorry we didn't get to this. You've, you've had your new HTC One for like two weeks at this point. This is a very old listener mail. But I think it, if my sclerosis is not kicking in that he commented on one of my pieces and I replied to him, or there was somebody else with this exact same, same problem. story. Well, if, if that is the case and you've already, this has already been answered, then I, you know it's just compelling to me because the, the most fascinating part of this piece of listener mail to me is, do you think it's petty for me to have Sprint send me a new one? Oh, no, not at all. Absolutely not. No, if a product comes to your door, like, go yell. Absolutely. Bang the door down until they get you what you paid for. Like, we've talked about this in other contexts with Apple sending out iPhones with dents and dings in the chamfered edge. We've yep. talked about it with HTC One and its uh, its its manufacturing, um, you know, inconsistencies. Absolutely, if something comes, to it, I've sent stuff back for less. If a device comes out of the box and the screen protector has obviously been taken off once and then reapplied and it's got all those bubbles underneath it, yep. get out of here. I don't want anything oh, yeah. that's been touched by by human hands that are not quality control people in the factory. If I'm buying yep. a new device, I deserve a new device, and so do you, Randy. Correct. You wouldn't buy a new car with three or four hundred miles on it, would you? Exactly. I mean, it's it's, it's no, you you bought something new, you get it new, and you get it pristine. Exactly. And it I, does... granted, I didn't get a new iPhone. <laughs> I got an iPhone that was pretty banged up when I 
take it or took it out of the box, but I didn't get it replaced. So well, and and that's the thing. I you know I think it's a different story when you're when you're getting a device that is on launch weekend and there's going to be a back backlog or back order for four weeks. Well, maybe yeah. you have to sit there and live with that, and that really frankly sucks. But yep. that's a different judgment call. Right now, you know, with this kind of situation where you have an easy replacement, yeah, no, 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 you're not petty at all, Randy. I think that's it's yeah, good. Do that it. you, yeah, it's good that you did what you did. The only way a phone should come with a, a screen protector or the, the plastic film reapplied is if it's a review device and someone else has had it first. And even I then, I hate that. it. Yeah. Even then, I hate it. I yeah. absolutely Sell hate it. Sell it as a refurb. Yeah. So the w- the way that that happens sometimes, listeners, is uh, you know different outlets get different review devices at different times, and depending on your relationship with the manufacturer or the carrier, sometimes you're the first, sometimes you're second, sometimes you're third. So we've been we've been in all three categories. We get you know we have different relationships with everybody. So whenever I get a second string review device that somebody else has had, I'm like, oh, you didn't yeah. put the protector. Oh, oh, oh. That's when we go to unbox it, and everybody's like, fake. This is fake. You yeah. unboxed you it already. already. We're no, in there. I yeah. Didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's best is when the previous review Reviewer doesn't clear it first, and um, oh, the yeah. gallery is full of photos oh, yeah. of like their you know disheveled apartment. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> I I got a I got one a few weeks back, and I booted it up, and uh, <laughs> when I did, it said uh, re, uh, wipe complete. I'm like, because hmm. hmm. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell that it had been used. Uh, the, oh, the, really? The plastic on it was was perfect. Oh, it was probably an actual factory refurb then. Uh, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I, I opened the box and it said wipe complete. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've been fooled. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, the second piece of listener mail here. This is from, uh, I love this. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Belgioseda. Uh, in, parentheses, in parentheses right next door. Come on, Michael, try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best I can do, Daniel. I'm your follower from Costa Rica. Awesome. Now, my sister is about to get a new phone and she wants a smartphone with a physical QWERTY keyboard and a touch screen. What Q10. recommendations would you give her? What would you say? Q10. Q10? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, yeah, if she's a new smartphone buyer, then the Q10 actually might not be a bad choice. Considering, I think we've said several times that le- leaping into a nascent ecosystem is a lot easier if you haven't come from a previous one. But if, if she's, uh, go ahead, Tony. If you can hunt down a Dell Venue Pro, go with that. Oh, a Dell Venue Pro running oh, Windows yeah. Phone Seven Five. That wasn't bad. But most, I, I just can't deal with sliders. I can't do it. Yeah, slide. You know, the no, Venue Pro was nice. I, I will give it that. But the, I can't deal with sliders. But if she's on a, an OS, like the the only other option then is Android because iOS obviously doesn't have any. Excuse me, physical keyboards. Um, the only other option is to go with something like the Droid Four from Motorola, which is probably mm-hmm. called something in a different different in international markets. And it's Motorola Flip Out, the Flip and Out. It's old. Oh, and, or the Motorola Photon uh, from Sprint. Oh man, nah, I Flip Out back in the day. <laughs> or the Flip Out, the Flip oh, Out. Oh god, that thing was so bad. You know what? Was that 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 small square thing which flipped out? Actually flipped yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were two and then Nokia of them. There had one of those too. And, uh, and the flip back or the back flip. Yeah, back Yeah, flip. with the screen on the wrong side of the thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So all these are options you shouldn't go for. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and neither, neither should you go for the Palm Pre 3, even though I want to recommend that. Um, it's so difficult. It is. It is. We we write an editorial about this. I feel like once a month or so, where it's like it's so difficult to find a physical QWERTY keyboard and a touch screen and you know bundled into a good device. Yeah. Uh, you can find good devices. You can't find great ones. You know, my they're all mostly haphazard. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Daniel, that's a very difficult question. Um, she's not going to find a whole lot. And w- the only thing that I will say, and this is exactly what what most people don't want to hear, is uh, touchscreen keyboards are are the predominant choice now. They are. They're much better too. Well, they're better for a lot of people. I, I, I feel like a lot well, of people are hesitant to even try them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just try I, out eight I, pin. You'll you'll ch- it'll change your life. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daniel. Unfortunately, an, you're just asking for a for a device category that's dying. Slowly. Yeah, I've got an editorial on this later this week, actually. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, then I'll I'll postpone the one I was going to write for next month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tony, put that in your notes. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll start a new one. <laughs> I will. I was wrong. Uh, four pieces of listening. You sound crushed. Room. Yeah, poor Tony sounds just so... I'm still bad. looking at the empty know. trash bin. Oh, no. oh, you didn't finish her reader mail or his reader oh, mail. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Daniel uh, also asks about... Jaime said something about using the VPN settings on his Android to get apps that wasn't available and weren't available in his country running normally. Could you explain how to do it, Daniel asks? No. I There's no need to explain. It. I'm uh, also in uh, Jaime's shoes. I don't live in the U.S., but you don't have to have an actual VPN so that you can dig into settings and uh, and then uh, do some hocus pocus there. You need to go into the Play Store. And while you are in the Play Store, you need to search for an application which is called... I'm browsing my list now. Hotspot Shield VPN. It is a free application which allows you s- slow VPN speeds in the U.S. for US IP. But if you need higher speeds, there's also a subscription which will cost you uh, around $9 per year. So that's you just fire it up. Play Store sees you in the U.S. and boom. Boom. Huh. Wow. That's actually not bad. I did not know that we were going to actually have an answer there. Thank you, Tony. Yes. Welcome. Glad we had you. Because yeah. I would not know I how to answer that. I would not have known how to answer that at all. <laughs> Start talking VPN. I really get lost quickly. My eyes glaze over. Um, this uh, High Pocket Now team from Jell Loman. I think we've heard from Jell before. I was just wondering what everybody does outside of Pocket Now. Or is Pocket Now enough to be able to live? You them? don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Shell means uh, for employment, not for recreation. Yeah. Uh, P.S. Is Brandon still vegetarian? Is he? I don't know. Last time I checked, yes, he was. Is he really? I was I hoping know. to answer this when Brandon was on the air, but there's another piece of listener mail I want to answer when Brandon is on the air because it has to do with old school Pocket Now. Um, so uh, to answer your question broadly, <laughs> some of us are work for Pocket Now full time. Others juggle uh, Pocket Now and a bunch of other commitments. I actually still, I actually still do that. I actually do still have other income coming from other places. But uh, oh. in addition to being full time, and then some of us are part time and uh, full time elsewhere, and some of us are just contributors. And we have the, like the whole spread, don't we, gentlemen? Yep. Oh, yeah, I am full time. All three of us on the air yeah. are full time right now. Tony Taylor yep. and I are full time. Uh, but I, I work on personal projects uh, when I have a spare moment, which is and, not and very do, often. Do you get paid? Do you pay yourself from left bucket to right bucket? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's, good that for pro you. bono good, doesn't count. Good cost one, savings. Yeah, well, one one day, one day. Yeah. It counts because I'm working towards a goal, but right. other than that, it's, it's not like I'm just building airplanes, like toy airplanes in my side or my spare time. I'm, oh, I'm working on, on projects. Interesting so. that you, you bring that up. See, I do, I do do that. Uh, yeah. My, I run a, <laughs> I run a YouTube based business that focuses on scale model. Yeah, stuff I saw that. That's father. actually really cool. Yes. I, I love, I love RC and stuff. So. Oh, thanks. Oh, I didn't know you'd seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Rapid Nudeon. It's time for self pimping. Rapid Nudeon. <laughs> yeah, I saw the, uh, the, the boat on the, the frozen lake. Oh, you saw the ice boat. Yeah. That's not one of our more exciting ones. Watch the submarine missile launches. Those are fun. Uh, just link me to it. I, I sure on. will. I definitely will. Um, and I'll link you to the coolest video I ever saw on YouTube. Guys, my dinner's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Final piece of listener mail. Now that uh, – wow, I don't have I, – uh, apparently – Now that all major OEMs except HTC seem to be rehashing old designs with new features, gimmicks, and aggressive marketing drives, do you think that it's time to look at the small local OEMs like the Noids, the Yoda phones, and even India's Micromax as the innovation drives in the industry? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, um, I, L- I, LG. I don't know who wrote this piece of email because I copied it. That's right from uh, from uh, from Jell Loman. It's a, a PS after the PS, or maybe it's a copy paste fail. No, it's no, it's a copy paste fail. Uh, so uh, this is a really good question, and yes, I think that the smaller t- companies are really going to going to prompt the bigger boys to stay on their feet as far as innovation goes. Ooh, listen to that siren. <laughs> <laughs> muted himself. Um, yeah, LG uh, is underrated as one of the, the innovators. They're not exactly one of the top brands. I guess they're they're among the top, but they're not the top brand. Um, but they have pushed innovation for several years in the mobile space for now, or, or currently. Um, they were the first with a dual core processor. Um, yeah, they're the first with 3D. They're first with a bunch of stuff. But what about the like the yeah. really small guys, like the the, the Yoda phone? Yoda phone. The world, Yoda yeah. phone. I am so excited about that thing. I was just talking to the Yoda phone guys. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I wish they would upgrade the specs for when it's actually ready. 
yeah. which I'm afraid they probably will not do because that costs a lot of money. Right, but but uh, it's, it's an innovative concept, right? It's a dual Yeah, the, the principle. And, and the the principle real, is awesome. The real question is, you guys, us geeks, are excited, but does the rest of the population care about Yoda phone? I don't think, not yet, because well, it's not terribly it. visible yet, but even when it becomes visible, right, are, are enough people going to care? Maybe not, but I think the effect that those kind of companies will have on the industry overall is profound because the bigger guys will look to these smaller players and say, oh, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and for lack of a better term, let's steal it. And they'll buy them out. Right, or yeah. they'll buy them. Well, Yoda, right. Yoda's not exactly small. They're backed by, um, oh, God, who are they backed by? Is it, the, is it a Russian carrier? Like they're, uh, they're funded actually, by. no Russian company which goes international is small. Mm. Yeah, well, the Russians don't do, don't do much small, right? I mean, like that's yeah. kind of a yeah, cultural so thing. Yoda, if I'm not mistaken, is backed by Russia's largest carrier. Really? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't think be surprised I, I read with the elaborate booth we saw at frickin' MWC. Remember that, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's I, see. I'm going to Google it. So, yeah. So, I think that, in short, yes, these, these companies play a vital role in ensuring innovation goes forward, especially in, in, in a climate where shows like CES and MWC are starting to feature the big players less and less um, predominantly because the big players want to have their own shows. And the, these big CES and MWC shows like have to feature the, these, the, the little guys. And look at what little companies can do. Look at what, like, you know, five people started at Pebble. You know, and mm -hmm. that's an accessory. It's not a mobile phone, well, but still. Well, they were uh, a company before. Oh, well, yeah, that um, was, I know, that was Impulse, but. Alerta. Or Alerta, yeah. Um, Yoda Phone is backed by the parent company, Yoda. <laughs> Yay. <Hey. laughs> um, it is a significant player in LTE hardware. So they're, they're no stranger to mobile phones. It's okay. just. So they're like Huawei where they have a big yeah. infrastructure footprint. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, that is an awesome question. Sorry that we do not have you, uh, have your name on the air because I'm an idiot, uh, but I'll fix that in the, in the post itself. And thanks to all the listeners who wrote in. Um, somebody tweeted at me earlier with this. I just sent in a piece of listener mail, but it's very long. I wonder if it will be read. I'm so sorry. As you yeah, can see, we don't have the time. From now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just don't have the time for long listener mail. Please do write in, folks. Uh, we, you, the address is at the end of the show, but make sure and keep it brief because we just don't have time for long emails. I'm so sorry. Um, but unless either of you gentlemen have anything, do you? Not at all. I need more coffee. That's it. Me too. Tony, your dinner? What is your, what is, yes. What's for dinner tonight? I have no idea. My mom is celebrating her birthday, and she's been spending the entire day in the kitchen. So, But judging by the odors and smells coming my way, it's going to be good. It's, I'm, I'm sure it is. I've, I've as, as, long as, my, before, it's, as long as my trainer doesn't know about it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's your cheat day, right? Yeah. No, no, but today it is. Today it is. It will be. <laughs> Well, then, in that case, let's get you to dinner, Tony, and let's get you some more coffee, Taylor, because that's going to do it for this episode of The Weekly. Find us on Twitter. Anton is at Anton D. Nogy, A-N-T-O-N-D-N-A-G-Y, and you can find him on Facebook at Official ADN. Uh, Taylor is at Casper Tech, C-A-S-P-E-R-T-E-K. As always, you can find me at Captain Two Phones. You can also follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, Pocket Now on Facebook and Google+. Do leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music. We are missing those. And if you have a topic, question, or suggestion for the podcast, or you would like to say hello briefly, that would be wonderful. Email us at podcast at pocketnow.com. Thank you for listening, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you. See you later. All right, guys, uh, we got call recorder running. Uh, we're all sitting here. We sound great. I think it's about time we started talking about technology. Sound great, and we look even better. We look all awesome. All right. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Three, two.